My name is David Kildary and I'm one of the owners of the Lunar Drive-In Theatre here in Dandenong. The other owner is my brother Matthew. We own and manage the drive-in theatre but it means we also work in the business as well. So I also work as projectionist as my brother Matthew does. My history with drive-in theatres actually goes back all the way to perhaps the mid-1970s when my parents built a second story extension on the family home. My sister got the choice of her bedroom and she chose the one that looked out over the backyard pool. I chose my bedroom window and it looked out to a drive-in screen. So right from those very first moments I was fascinated with the drive-in theatre. I was destined to work in one. This drive-in theatre here is the oldest surviving in Australia. It actually opened in May 1956 and it's ridden the roller coaster that all drive-ins have in Australia and it's one of the few lucky survivors. Drive-in theatres started off with a boom in popularity from the first drive-in that opened here in Melbourne, Burwood, 1954, right through the late 1950s, the 60s, they kept on being built. Up to 350 were built around Australia and those boom times really did continue into the 1970s. But by then the slide had started. Uh, poor choice of films, bad choice of uh, food that was available and by the mid 1980s the vast majority of driving theatres were either closed or about to close. Unfortunately the price of land doesn't justify 350 drive-ins being open again in Australia but there's certainly room for the 20 odd that run weekly first release films. They're spread across most states except Northern Territory and Tasmania and as long as that formula continues with strong family films, drive-ins that are run efficiently with good food and good quality service, there'll still be some surviving into the future. Drive-ins and particularly this one is special to me because it entertains people in a way that people have been entertained for over 100 years. Cinema has survived because it's constantly reinvented itself. We went from silent outdoor uh, picture gardens to uh, old flea pits to massive suburban uh, picture palaces to the big city cinemas to the suburban cinemas to the drive-ins. Uh, the cinema industry has continually evolved and drive-in certainly is a throwback to the past but combined with today's technology with FM stereo with uh, Zen and Arc lamps to give brighter images on screen with high quality food to make the offering relevant to today's audience is very important and that's special to me because we've been able to turn an old-fashioned entertainment into something that appeals to today's audience. This is the first time we've been to the drive-in for a long time. Um, we have my own family now so my children wanted to come to the drive-in and experience what a drive-in was like. I used to go to drive-ins quite frequently when I was uh, a young teenager and young adult and um, enjoyed having the speaker put onto the car window. I mean that was kind of cool back then but now it's through the radio so it's a little bit more cozy. We've seen a couple people with PJs seen some couple people with chairs I, I sort of suggested we probably should bring our chairs next time and there's some you could probably lounge out a little bit and bring some you know something to drink and some refreshments and be like a big picnic I think um, the come people come to drive drive into it's just good fun go out with friends and family can't cheat walk yeah well we eat popcorn and we get stuff to eat and then we watch movies uh, this is the second time I've actually been to the drive-in. It seems like it's a sort of different thing to do rather than just going to a normal movie. I've travelled from uh, Heatherton, uh, which is about a 25-minute drive. I've been here, this is probably about my ninth or tenth time in the last five years. It's an outing. I have three young children and uh, they love coming here and they get outside and they can run around. The food's good. It's just for good fun. Drive-ins have always been a very big part of their community. If you look back at country towns in Victoria, or in fact across Australia and even North America, drive-in theatres often replaced the cinema that may well have closed in the 50s or 60s, and the drive-in theatre for the next 20 or 30 years became the meeting place, the place where community met and were entertained, and even if everybody didn't talk to everybody, they socialised together, and that's an important aspect of cinema in general. This drive-in was a very similar story. It was surrounded by paddocks and farmhouses, when it initially opened, but very quickly the industrialisation of the Dandenong area brought many families and many of those were migrants and this really became the centre of Dandenong's community. People would see and meet people, they met their wives here, they hooked up with mates, they came with families and we often see carloads of kids disgorge and they run into kids from their local school and that might not be a school that's a kilometre away, that might be a school 20 kilometres away. It's also funny to hear children's comments 
Daddy, where's the roof? You often hear things like that. Or, what's this place, Mum? What's going to happen? The, the sense of amazement in a young child when they come to a drive-in theatre for the first time, which the reality is it's off the radar of young children today. It's something that we rely on their parents remembering, hopefully good experience, and bringing their kids back to the drive-in theatre. And their sense of wonder is, is just a great thrill. And this drive-in really does sum up how drive-ins were an integral part of Australia's not only cinema history, but social history as well.